The belief that the federal government has a responsibility for full employment has its roots in the Great Depression. It was given statutory expression at the end of the Second World War when policymakers and legislators feared that the millions of American soldiers returning to the labor market would face Depression-era conditions. With concerns about employment again on the rise, in 1976, Senator Hubert Humphrey joined with Congressman Augustus Hawkins to sponsor legislation promoting full employment. 7. An amendment to the Federal Reserve Act in 1977 specifically assigned monetary policy responsibility for promoting the goals of maximum employment, stable prices, and moderate long-term interest rates, commonly referred to as the dual mandate. The Federal Reserve recently concluded a review of our monetary policy framework, which included extensive outreach to a broad range of people over the course of 2019. In 14 Fed Listens events in communities around the country, we heard testimonials that would have sounded strikingly familiar to Congressman Hawkins. At a time when the national headline unemployment rate was at a multi-decade low, community and labor representatives and educators noted it's always a recession in their communities. 14 They challenged whether the overall economy could be characterized as at full employment while unemployment remained in the double digits in their communities. Reflecting this input, and in light of persistently below target inflation, low equilibrium interest rates, and low sensitivity of inflation to resource utilization, we made several important changes to the monetary policy framework. Two changes have particular relevance for the employment leg of the dual mandate. 15 The new framework calls for monetary policy to seek to eliminate shortfalls of employment from its maximum level. In contrast to the previous approach that called for policy to minimize deviations when employment is too high as well as too low, the new framework also defines the maximum level of employment as a broad-based and inclusive goal assessed through a wide range of indicators. Disaggregating the overall unemployment rate reveals that workers in the lowest wage quartile face Depression-era rates of unemployment of around 23%, 18 in part. This rate likely reflects the concentration of lower wage jobs in service industries that are strongly reliant on in-person contact, or at least in-person work, while a larger proportion of higher wage jobs are currently being performed remotely or with reduced levels of in-person contact. The fiscal support that is enacted and expected will provide assistance to vulnerable households, small businesses, and localities and a significant boost to activity when vaccinations are sufficiently widespread to support a reopening of in-person services. Monetary policy will continue to provide support by keeping borrowing costs for households and businesses low. The assessment of shortfalls from broad-based and inclusive maximum employment will be a critical guidepost for monetary policy, alongside indicators of realized and expected inflation. The Federal Open Market Committee has said it expects the policy rate to remain in the current target range until labor market conditions have reached levels consistent with the committee's assessments of maximum employment and inflation has risen to 2% and is on track to moderately exceed 2% for some time. It has noted that asset purchases will continue at least at the current pace until substantial further progress has been made toward the maximum employment and inflation goals. In assessing substantial further progress, I will be looking for sustained improvements in realized and expected inflation and examining a range of indicators to assess shortfalls from maximum employment. I will be looking for indicators that show the healing in the labor market is broad-based, rather than focusing on the narrow aggregate U3 unemployment rate. In light of the significant decline in labor force participation since the spread of COVID and the extremely elevated unemployment rate for workers in the lowest wage quartile. But changes in economic relationships over the past decade have led trend inflation to run persistently somewhat below target and inflation to be relatively insensitive to resource utilization. With these changes, our new monetary policy framework recognizes that removing accommodation preemptively as headline unemployment reaches low levels in anticipation of inflationary pressures that may not materialize may result in an unwarranted loss of opportunity. For many Americans, it may curtail progress for racial and ethnic groups that have faced systemic challenges in the labor force, which is particularly salient in light of recent research indicating that additional labor market tightening is especially beneficial for these groups when it occurs in already tight labor markets. Compared with earlier in the labor market cycle, 
33 instead. The shortfalls approach means that the labor market will be able to continue to improve absent high inflationary pressures or an unmooring of inflation expectations to the upside. While I will carefully monitor inflation expectations, it will be important to see a sustained improvement in actual inflation to meet our average inflation goal. Today the economy remains far from our goals in terms of both employment and inflation, and it will take some time to achieve substantial further progress. I look forward to the time when this K-shaped recovery becomes a broad-based and inclusive recovery and when vaccinations are widespread, the services sector springs back to life and all Americans enjoy the benefits of full employment.